Hello, and welcome to my tutorial on uh, clone tinting in Corel Painter 2021. I like to make these Sumier style landscapes, and I use black ink or black watercolor or a combination of the two to do it. And from time to time, I want to add color back into it, but it's, it's very difficult to do if they're black. But we can do it easily with clone tinting. And uh, let's take a look at how I would do that. The first thing I want to do or want to say is that it works better if you work with multiple layers and have your different objects on a different layer. For instance, if I come down here to watercolor layer one, this whole big mass of land is on that image. So I can take my cursor and I can right click the layer and then I have the option to select layer content. So I click on select layer content and now all of that content is selected. I want to then go up to select save selection and have the option to put in a name. But I've already done this. So if I click down on new, you'll see that I have water, second landmass, clouds, large landmass, and so forth already made into selections, which will make the video go a little bit faster. So we'll cancel that and we'll turn off the selection. And now after I've made my selections, I want to create a clone source from this image. Now I don't want the red chop there. So I'm going to go up to the top to my chop and I'm going to turn off the visibility eye, which means that painter will not see the, uh, the, the chop anymore. And then what I want to do is go up to photo art palette drawer, or I go into windows and come down to clone source and click on clone source. And I want to open up the clone source. Mine currently is set at texture. That's because I was just using a texture. Yours will probably be set at pattern. You want to click on the down arrow and come down to embed image and click that. And then you'll get this window that says, okay, where is this source image coming from? And you either have to browse for it or you can select the current document or the current texture. And we're going to select the current document, which is called clone tinting practice. Okay. And we're going to say, okay. And there it is in the image. Now, this image has a gradient on it. Let me move this over just a little bit. It has a gradient on it, and I don't know that I want to clone with the gradient in place. So I'm going to turn that gradient off, and I get this much brighter image. And I'm going to come down here to this little folder, because once you've embedded an image, you can embed many of them, but you use the folder now from this point on. I click that folder, and again, I can browse, I can use the current image, or I can find the current texture. But I just want to use this image again, so all I have to do is click it again, and there I have both uh, images available to me. Okay, so I'm going to roll that up again, and I'm going to come over here and turn off watercolor layer three to watercolor layer one. I'm going to hold my shift key down and select it. Now that all of them are selected, I can turn off the visibility eye for one and all of them will be turned off. Now I have a layer that's here that doesn't have anything on it. I would put the layer in between watercolor three and layer two, and this is where I'm going to clone. And I wanted it under the gradient because I thought maybe I might want to use that gradient again. I'm just not sure. But this sets it up for me. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is open up my selection. So I'm going to go to selections, load selection, and I will pick the large land mass and say okay. And there it is in place. Okay. Now what I want to do is I'm going to select this grainy tint scumble brush. 
which is at a very large size, and I'm going to bring it down to a reasonable size. You want it to be kind of large, but it doesn't have to be that large. All right. Uh, then I want to decide on what my source is. If I'm using that black source, it means a lot of the color is going to come from the black. Even though the clone tinning will affect it, it's still going to be very dark. So instead of using that, one of these to begin with, I'm going to start with a texture. And I'm going to start with this texture called Rocks. And we'll... Now that I've selected it, I want to come up here and show texture, which that shows the texture. And now I want to click here and say show or hide transform texture. And the transform texture opens up. So now I want to move this around. And when I click on the move, then I see that the bounding box is quite large. So all I want to do now is just move this around until I find what looks like a, a nice mountain fitting into this area. Yeah, I kind of like this smoothness here. Let's try that. So we'll commit, and usually you'll get a it, uh, a pop-up window that says you need to save this if you want to use it again. But I'm not going to save it because I'm not going to use it again. And I just want to turn off the show texture so that I don't see what I'm uh, working with. Now, I have the grainy tent scumble. And if I look at its clone method here, it has clone tinning at 50% at heavy pressure. Now, I want to change that to light pressure because I'm not going to be painting hard, and the light pressure will give me more of the clone tint color. And I'm going to turn that color into a kind of purpley color. Now, once you select a color, when you hover over the color wheel, it will become apparent you know, what the color is. When you move away, it's going to go gray because it is set up with clone color. All right, so here we've got this going. And I actually, I'm going to make the brush a little smaller even. And I'm just going to kind of lightly use this brush up here. And you can see that 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 purpley color is certainly coming into play. And you get a kind of a scrumbled look there, and I like that. Now, let's take it to a browner color. Let's see, I think I want to go with this sort of, this brown here. And Let's go up here, and we're going to change that brush now to a light pressure. Uh, not light pressure, rather. So that my lighter pressure is going to pull in the rock more. And if I press hard, I'm going to get some of that green coming in. But right now, I'm, I'm more interested in that kind of yellowy color of the rock. And I like the sort of modeled look that this brush does give. Okay, now I'm going to change this with light pressure again. And I'm going to grab this kind of blue color and just introduce some of that in here. And I want to get this darker blue. Put some of that in, and a little brightness would be nice. And I think that's probably enough color at the moment. We need something a little bit darker. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to the embedded image, the second image using, we'll use this blue again, 
But watch how much darker it's going to be. Look, see there? And it's darker because it's picking up the black. If I do this real light color, it's going to give me a brown. And I like that, but I'm going to take the brush down really small because the, sm the faster you spin with this, uh, paint with this brush, the smaller the little spots are. I'm going to go to the brighter color again. And I want to see if this will come in a little brighter. Yeah, that's pretty nice. I like the combination. Okay, I think that is probably good enough for this part of it. Okay, I'm going to switch now to the grainy tent knife. And I'm going to, I think I'll leave it on the texture to start with. And we'll pick uh, this kind of dark olive green. And we'll come in and put it in here. like that and I may take a little bit lighter one and that just that looks too plastic that's probably a little bit better I'll have to do something else to that in a minute. All right, so after I've done that, I want to switch now to the embedded image using that clone tent. Now the color of this is going to be much darker. And I need to make the brush bigger. And we'll come in here, make the brush a lot littler. And let's take this really light color here and see if how dark it will be. It's not quite as dark. Okay. Now what I want to do is go back to my grainy tint. I'm going to go to texture and I'm going to pick this bright rock and I have no idea where it's there. I'm not even going to look. I'm just going to come in here and do some light color, small little bits and pieces of color and go over the edge here so that it doesn't look so pronounced and I think that helped a lot and we'll bring in a little of the purple if we can and we can. I brought in a little of the purple and we'll bring in some of this blue. Okay, now what I'm going to do, that looks pretty good to me. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this and open that layer up beneath it. And that's going to give it that black underneath and kind of pop it just a little bit. And I think we have our mountains. Okay, this is the basic technique that I'm going to be using, but I can't spend uh, more time because you, you wouldn't want to watch the video for that long. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to finish the painting up. And all I'm going to do is I will get rid of this selection and I will come up to my select 
and I will load selection and I will load like the second land, land mask, which is that one. And I'll do the same thing that I've been doing. I'm going to use, I think, this rock here. And I want to, this needs to be a pretty gray color. So I'm going to go kind of gray blue with my tone. And then I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to add a new layer because I want to keep it on a separate layer. And I will come in and start putting this down like this. Now, what I'm going to do is hide the marquee by going to select hide marquee. That way, on a smaller item like this, I want to be able to see what it looks like in those line, those little marching ants are distracting. Okay, so I'm pressing hard now, which is bringing in a fair amount of detail, but it's still kind of off in the distance. So I want to increase the amount of that gray uh, with a light pressure. Now I'm going to give it a little more brown, just a spot or two, and that's probably all I need. So what I'll do is I'll keep doing the same sort of thing that I've been doing. Let's open up the background for that one, which is probably right here. Yeah, see, that, that looks pretty nice. It's a little bit strong now. But I could come in and, and reduce its opacity, or maybe that gradient will make a difference. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video and finish up this, and then I'll bring you back in to see what the finished product looked like. But I'm not going to do anything different from what I've been doing, and I probably will use the same two brushes for most of it. I like those two brushes. All right, talk to you soon. Uh, as soon as I get it finished. Okay, what you see here is almost the finished piece. What I did do is I added another gradient layer, and that on top of the gradient layer that was already there, and that made a very dark color. And the change in the color was very different as well, but that's because I'm using difference as a method composite method. But the rest of it was done exactly like the previous was done. We just, well, I used a different brush on the clouds and the water. I used the tent and blend sergeant brush. And I used a different, I used this texture, which if I show the texture, it has, well, I can't get to it. Let's do it this way. Okay, there we go. It has a kind of a, a blue textured surface up here, and it gave me a nice uh, mottled sky and water. But then after all that was said and done, let's get rid of this. We will, I've got to commit. And then I cannot show texture. There we go. All right, so after it was all said and done, what I did then was I copied it to, uh, I did a, a merge, a copy merge, and then copied it to a new image. And after I copied it to the new image, I did some equalization on it. And that lightened everything up so that it wasn't quite so dark and it gave me some interesting blues and touches of orange in here and i then added the chop back and i lightened it just a little bit but i think it's a nice image you have to remember that the original image looked like this one i think yeah all right, so let's do this. We'll put that one up. And we'll open up the this one. Move it over to the side. 
make it a little bigger. And there you have the two images and how they finally came out. And I think that's pretty, pretty fun. All right. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Bye-bye.